on to our third speaker, uh, who is to my right, Nira Yuval Davis, who is a diasporic Israeli Jewish socio sociologist, an anti-racist campaigner, and an anti-fundamentalist feminist. You're very welcome. Thank you very much. Keep talking, yes, okay. <laughs> I do, believe me. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Maya, Maria May, and uh, the others for inviting me uh, to speak. As I am the lone so-called Jewish voice in this conference, I want to um, uh, focus on some of the kind of context issues as well as just uh, specifically on the questions of uh, women. Um, I uh, want to echo what um, Karima said because I did enjoy tremendously and think very highly about the conference yesterday but I did come out with some feelings of discomfort around the two issues that Karima um, raised. First of all, um, religions, like all other cultural resources, are full in their traditions and in their text of contradictions. And in every practice, especially political practice, that are relying upon um, such religious texts and traditions are always selective. And this is why I, I'm sure and I know that the Quran does not only re talk about women in the terms, a very important term that were mentioned in the previous talk. I want to say also that the issue of racism is also very important. One of the fights as an anti-Zionist Israeli Jew has been always to separate between anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism or anti-Jewish racism. And we are actually organizing in February in SOAS a conference about anti-Jewish and anti-Muslim racisms and the question of Palestine Israel and you are all welcome to come. The role of religion has also been different in different settler colonial projects. For example, in the American settler project, because it, the settlers came from different relig uh, persecuted religious communities, it brought to some kind of uh, uh, religious tolerance and pluralism. Of course, it didn't prevent the genocide genocidal kind of attitudes towards the indigenous population, the American Indians. But it allowed different interpretations of religion as some kind of a basic uh, citizenship uh, rights. In the Zionist settler colonial project, this has been very different. There have been only one version of Jewish religion uh, basically uh, orthodoxy, uh, which has been accepted as the Jewish tradition. Now, it's very interesting because the Zionist project has been constructed by the first and second generation leaderships that were overwhelmingly not only secular but, um, but atheist as a modernizing project of Jewishness, and they've been all, they were the sec, one of the secular nationalist ones, another one was uh, the Jewish Bund, and there were also similar modernizing projects, religious ones, like the reform and conservative uh, Jewishness. But the Zionist um, project, because in spite of the atheism of the dominant leadership, needed the Jewish religion for legitimation for two basic reasons. First of all, for the claim of the territory of Palestine as a traditional promised land and homeland for the Jews to come and ingather. Secondly, unlike the Jewish bond, 
Bund, which uh, tried to emancipate only the Jews in Eastern Europe, they claim to represent the Jews all over the world because they needed a mass of settlers. In the Australian Settler Project, it says, popular or perish. And this has been here in terms of the settlement project, in terms of the uh, conflict with the Palestinian and the Arab um, environment and the anti-colonial um, uh, struggle. And of course, um, as a result of what happened in the Holocaust, there has been also this uh, urge to replace all the uh, six million Jews that were uh, exterminated by the uh, Nazis by the so-called new Jews who have the so-called normal nation state and um, grow up um, in um, Israel. Now, what is very interesting is the different situated gaze of the relationship between the secular and the religious Zionist uh, movements. That most of the religious Jews, until at least 67, did not support the Zionist project. At most, they, most of them treated them as any other uh, nation state. The aim was to try and get as many and much resources from, uh, from them. Some uh, minority in the Carta are actively anti-Zionist. But the minority Zionist religious movement uh, headed by the Rav Cook, claimed that the secular Zionist movement are the donkey, the donkey of the Messiah. The Messiah is riding on a donkey to save the world and, of course, the, the Jews, but the self, uh, universal re uh, redemption. But the donkey doesn't know that, but he's absolutely vital and instrumental in the project to bring the Messiah to Jerusalem. So, while the secular Jews thought that they are using the religion to legitimate, to claim the country and the people, the Zionists said, uh, the religious Zionists said, the secular ones are doing the actual act of bringing the Jews to settle back, back in their whole, uh, holy land and uh, by that uh, case, helping to bring the Messiah. This is, by the way, the reason why all Christian fundamentalists in the United States especially are supporting the settler movements after 67 because they perceive that the ingathering of all the Jews in the Holy Land is a precondition for Jesus to come back, the one particular uh, Messiah. Now, with the years, originally, the religious uh, parties in Israel, coalition party were always a vital partner because they were not so much interested in um, any kind of big political issues of foreign policy, defense policy or whatever. They focused on getting their own so resources as much as possible, especially in terms of education. This is why I'm so passionate about the importance, not only of secularism in general, but of secular education. Because what happened after 67, that the, we have a whole generation that has grown up in religious schools. And while until 67, the religious Zionists were second-rate uh, Zionists, and they were second-rate uh, Orthodox Jews, after 67, they found their role and their superiority on the frontier as settlers and also in the frontiers to bring the Messiah by these settlements. And because the non-Zionist religions religious also used it in order to settle with the yeshivas near the holy places to Judaism, which are in the most dense centers of population in the West Bank, there have been a rapprochement between the non-Zionist and the Zionist religious um, parties. Now, women has been at the forefront, and as often happens, the sac sacrificial lamb in many sense, or the, uh, the, the frontier of contestation in terms of 
this relationship between the secular and the religious um, Zionists. After 48, when the Israeli state was established, was a so-called status quo that the relationship between religious and uh, secular laws uh, continued to be in terms of what most of the people in particular places um, wanted. So there were buses, for example, on the Sabbath in Haifa, but they were not in Jerusalem, where it was much more religious. What happened about uh, family law, however, and the whole kind of structure of funding the Jewish uh, religious, as well as the Arab, uh, Muslim, and Christian, has been completely funded by the state. Because the whole structure was very much suitable to continue the millet system of the Ottoman Empire of religious communities. This is why when I first met uh, non-Israeli uh, non Palestinians and Arab intellectuals, they told me that the Israeli construction of the nation threatens not only because of the settler project and the other uh, occupation, etc., but because the whole national Arab movement, anti-colonial, was in order to overcome the communal boundaries between Christians and Muslims and different kind of ethnic and, and religious ones. And in a way, the construction of the Israeli uh, nationality has been in contravenous that. So in a way, the rise of religious communal identities but in the Palestinian and in the Israeli, uh, the, the, the rise of the Jewish fundamentalists have been very strong. And there's, there is always mutual encouragement. One of the most extreme ones was of Jewish Orthodox women try starting to build the, the, the veil, which is never have been part of the Jewish uh, tradition as part to show to prove their piety, obviously inspired by uh, Islamist women. And the rabbis didn't like it, not because so much of uh, covering women, but, uh, their faces, but because they didn't initiate it. And only, re uh, only men can be rabbis. Only men can make the rules. And this is why the contestations all the time is happening in Israel. Uh, Karima mentioned singing in the militaries. In more and more, there are religious commanders, unlike the earlier times in which it was always secular. The rabbis of the settlers issued an uh, order to the more and more religious soldiers to go to prison rather than attend occasions in which women uh, soldiers are singing. Recently, there's been an 11 hours uh, delay of a flight from New York to Israel because they were demanded, uh, the, the, the ultra-Orthodox um, um, uh, travelers, to sit next to women. We are seeing uh, separate buses in Israel, and some of the religious women oppose not to the segregation, but to the fact that the women are being put at the back rather than at the, at, at the front. I need to end, I just want to say that we should not, though, think that women are just passive victims. They have their own agencies. But it is very much built on their traditional gender roles. One of the most powerful uh, test, um, testimonies to that has been in, before the recent Gaza war, the mothers, the settler mothers of the three uh, teenagers that were kidnapped and murdered, manage to call for a prey in which even the leader of the party which came on a secularist, anti-religious um, message because the, 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 the prejudices and the, the hatred between secular and religious Jews in Israel is very bad. They managed to take, <laughs> I'm just finishing the sentence, to make him, as well as the rest of the secular public, pray in public. No men, no religious leaders would ever have managed that. Thank you.
Thank you so much, and I'm really sorry at having to keep to time. It's just so that you can talk, and obviously everybody's giving such food for thought.